Hi everybody, welcome back to our book club. Today we are reading secret number 18. I pray that these secrets, these tips are helping you to mature as a woman, to mature as a youth, and obviously it will have an impact in your life, in every area of your life, okay? Not just love life. Remember what we said in one of our episodes. We are not through this series teaching you how to find a man but teaching you the way to having a godly character, which means to have essence, the essence of God in you, which will be attractive for the right reasons and will also glorify the name of God, okay? So today we're gonna to talk about something and the title is, I am not in the mood. Now, this is very um, typical among young people. I'm not in a mood to do this. I don't feel like doing that. But life is about you doing what you don't want to do. Look at your parents or, who, or whoever raised you. Every morning, what do they need to do? Go to work. Now, I am going to work. Because if they don't go to work, guess what? How will they buy food? How will they pay rent? How will they buy you new shoes? <laughs> Isn't it? How, where will your pocket money come from? Yeah, that's right. You have to go against what you feel like, you know, you don't want to do something, but you go against that emotion. So today I want to specifically talk about, I'm not in the mood to go to church today. Oh, it's winter. It's a little bit chilled out there. My duvet is really hugging me today. I don't want to go out. Is this a good choice? Is this something positive? Will this bring good results? Will this? So these are questions you need to ask yourself from now on. Every time you say, I'm not in the mood, whatever it is, but let's bring this to the spiritual things. I'm not in the mood to go to church today. What does that say about you? We live in a society. Uh, and when I say that, uh, maybe I sound like I'm a hundred years old, but not long ago, people were a lot more, um, what's the word? They used to be a lot more, you know, less emotional. Let's put it that way. If you break a toaster, you, there was actually a place for you to go and for you to take your toaster for it to be fixed. Now, just buy yourself a new one. It's so cheap. Do you know what I mean? It can actually, um, I have one at home that almost caught fire the other day. You see how cheap, what cheap can do? Uh, anyway, but back in the day, things were made with a lot of quality. I'm sure there's also good quality items around today, but see if you understand what I mean. But nowadays is about being fast, quick, and not feeling pain at all, whatever you want to do. The, you know, society has created ways through selling you things or coming up with schemes, coming up with whatever courses to minimize people's sacrifice. Do you understand? So this is all very negative for us today, for young people today, in a way. Does it help people? Yes. However, it's making people more and more lazy. So. When you feel, when you have this emotion, oh, I don't feel like going to, to church today. Oh, it, and then you, you immediately link your decision to the weather. Surely you've heard this in an advert. You know, when you watch TV, it's, you, you've been bombarded with lots of ideas. You, it, maybe you're not even noticing. So things like that, like, oh, you know, stay in a good, a good, Sunday in, a good weekend in, and then don't do this, do it, make yourself happy, blah, blah, blah. So all these things we start collecting in our mind. So whenever we are faced with um, something we don't want to do that will require a little sacrifice, oh, I don't want to do it. And guess what? I don't have to, right? I can stay home and watch the services online. So how is this not good? First of all, you are not learning to fight your 
um, negative emotions. And then you feel far away from God, like we mentioned recently in one of our episodes. What's going on in your mind? I think that was the name of the episode. What's going through your mind? You feel far away from God. You start getting yourself involved with people you never thought you would. Why? Because you are far from God. You are not listening to His Word. You are not, you are not um, uh, what's the word? You are not exposing yourself to the Word of God. Every Sunday is like putting petrol in a car. You need to refuel your, your vehicle. Otherwise, you run out on a motorway and then you need someone to come and rescue you. And this happens to people spiritually. You, you notice that you don't see things like before anymore. You, 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 you are really distant. You don't fear God as much. You don't, and when I say fear is you don't respect the holiness of the things of God. You don't think about reading your Bible like before. You think, oh, I'm not in the mood to read my Bible. You know, for example, we are doing the fast of Daniel right now. I don't know when you are watching this video, if it's going to be already over, but it's, it's something good for us. It's a sacrifice. We are going to be reading the Bible every day, a verse every day, and meditate on it and think about it. However, if you don't fight those emotions, that behavior of, oh, I don't feel like doing it now, then you will be so far from God that you never... One day when you look back, you're going to think, wow, how did that happen? And it's the small things that make a huge difference. It's you stopping attending the VYG meetings because of something so small. Maybe you, you don't get along with one of your uh, VYG friends. You know, something happened between you two and now you want to avoid the person. But have you ever thought that avoiding the person is making you avoid going to church? Where you get your fuel from. So what are you doing? You are not fighting your, your negative emotions. So I want you to understand that if you give in to, I'm not in the mood, have, take a second to imagine what your life would be like. Maybe you are young, but maybe you are watching me and you already have a job, you study, you pay rent. I don't know your situation, but think for a moment. What would life be like if you did everything you wanted to do? You would probably be without a home and without a job. Because guess what? Everything we do in life requires sacrifice, requires an effort. And the things of God are the same. Actually, the things of God require our very, very best. You can do something else. For example, you are doing some cooking at home. Should you do your very best? Yeah, but you can get away with not doing so much your very best. Maybe you are feeling a bit tired. So let me just put some pasta cooking and then I'll, you know, grate some cheese over it. Whatever is fast, right? Is it good for your health? Not really. But will it feed you and you, you will not faint? As a, so then it's not so bad. But with God, He doesn't accept second best. So maybe you usually complain about the same thing. You say, well, I've been attending the church for so long. I haven't received the Holy Spirit. I haven't yet this and that. I haven't yet been delivered of this because you are not giving him your best. You are not. If you look really deep and you are very honest with yourself, like brutally honest, you will see that you give to God spare, whatever is spare, whatever you feel like doing, whatever and whenever you want to do. So you don't have a discipline. It's like a commitment towards Him. You think, you treat God as if God was, I don't know, what can we compare that to? Um, a friend that you just go to whenever you need to borrow money. Maybe that's a good example. So God is not that kind of friend. 
God is there for you, but you need to show that you really, really want Him by prioritizing Him, making sure that every Sunday, or rather Saturday, you don't stay up late on your phone, playing games, talking or chatting with your friends. You know beforehand, hold on, tomorrow is Sunday. I'm going to prepare my clothes. I'm going to prepare my handbag, everything, my Bible, my notebook, whatever it is that you're going to need for, act for your activities in the church with the youths. You're going to prepare everything. You're going to have a nice breakfast before you leave home and off you go on time but maybe you don't do that. You go to bed really late because you don't feel like going to bed early. Look at how many actions maybe you take in your life, how many decisions you make, where there's always that argument attached. I don't, I'm not in the mood, so you don't have a shower. I'm not in the mood, so you don't cook food. And that's why you have a high cholesterol problem. Do we love to go to the kitchen every day? No. No. But do we need? Yes. I speak as an adult, obviously. Maybe you have someone to cook for you. So there are things in life that you need to understand. There must be sacrifice. And this is a good tip for you for adulthood. You will never be able to keep a job to be promoted if you never give your best. Children, young children, they do what they feel like. But after a certain age, you can't get away with it because it will start showing in your life the laziness, the lack of results, the lack of, um, you know, it will influence your happiness because what you are building is nothing. Everything is out of laziness. So you just do what you want to do, which is nothing. And going to the house of God is one of the most important things because every, every time you go on Sunday and you arrive on time, maybe you say that you are a faithful tither. You come every month with your envelope, with your first fruits. But did you know that you're coming on Sundays? On time, you are giving the tithe of your time for that week. Think about that. So if you don't, if you give in to, I'm not in the mood. So then I ask you the same question, the VYG asks, you know, the very famous logo, where are you going? Or will you, where will you end up with an attitude like this? For sure, far away from God, cold in your faith, and you will be the kind of person who just claps hands, claps their hands to other people's testimony because your life never changes, because you have to understand this. Every time, just to finalize, every time you hear a testimony of a young person, because we're talking about youths here, and you, you say to yourself, wow, he, she's so lucky. No, she put in the work that maybe you are not willing to put in. In life, what you what you sow is what you reap. And that is regardless of your beliefs, of your religious beliefs. So if you decide consciously to make a bad decision today, it doesn't matter who you are, how rich you are, how spiritual, non-spiritual, Christian or Christian, you, that seed will bear fruit. And with it, consequences. All right? Think about that. I hope this helped you. Join us again next week. Remember to read the task of today because I hope that everyone already has the book by now. But, uh, okay, let me just read the task. Okay, just in case. Task 18, look what it says. Analyze your attitudes, your life, and see whether you have been living according to your wishes and feelings. Go against that and do the very things you don't want to do because normally, those things will bless you. Are you not in the mood to wake up late at night to pray? Are you not in the mood to read the Bible? Are you not in the mood to pray? Are you not in the mood to fast? Are you not in the mood to go to church? You know now what you need to do. 
All right? That's all for now. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.